service the Model 820, begin using an M17 wrench to remove the four M10 hex nuts and lock washers. Supporting the discharge manifold with one hand, use a rubber hammer to tap the back side of the manifold. Separate the manifold from the cylinders. Please note, when removing the discharge manifold, the cylinders may stay in the discharge manifold or in the inlet manifold. If the cylinders stay in the discharge manifold, grasp end of cylinder and twist and pull from discharge manifold. If cylinders stay in the inlet manifold, use a crescent wrench to turn the crankshaft so the cylinders will move away from the inlet manifold. Then remove each cylinder. Place the discharge manifold on surface so the valve seat is facing upward. Using a reverse pliers, go inside of the valve seat and twist and pull away from the discharge manifold. Inspect O-rings and backup rings for cuts, nicks, or damage. Using a pick, remove the O-ring and backup ring from outer diameter of valve seat. Inspect the tapered surface of the valve seat for wear, pitting, or damage. Inspect O-ring sealing surface for damage. Remove the valve. Inspect tapered surface of the valve for wear, pitting, or damage. Also inspect the other surface for any signs of damage. Next, remove the valve spring. Inspect the spring for proper tension, excessive wear, or any signs of damage. Remove the valve spring retainer. Inspect the valve spring retainer for excessive wear or damage. Also be sure to check the internal nylon guide for any damage. Inspect the internal surfaces in discharge manifold where the valve seat o-ring seals for excessive wear or damage. Inspect o-ring and backup ring for cuts, nicks, or damage. Using a pick, remove the o-ring and backup ring from one end of the cylinder. Then remove the O-ring from the other end. Inspect the O-ring grooves on each of the cylinder for excessive wear or damage. Also be sure to check the inside diameter of the cylinder where the cups ride to ensure that they are smooth and there is no scoring, excessive wear, or any other types of damage. To reassemble the discharge valve assemblies, Place discharge manifold on a flat work surface with the manifold holes facing upward. Install the valve spring retainer with the internal nylon guide facing up. Install the spring into the valve spring retainer. Install the valve with the tapered surface facing upwards. Install the backup ring, followed by the O-ring, into the groove of the valve seat. Lubricate before installation. Note: O-ring should be facing the high pressure side of the valve seat. Install the valve seat with the tapered surface facing down. Set the discharge manifold off to the side. On the cylinder end that has the larger groove, place backup ring first and then the O-ring. On the side with the smaller groove, place a new O-ring. Set cylinders off to the side. Use a 13 mm wrench to remove the four cylinder bolts.
Turn the crankshaft to reposition the center piston rod to its furthest forward position. Use a side cutter to remove cotter pins at the end of each piston rod. The cotter pins should be discarded. New cotter pins are supplied in the repair kit. Using a 10 mm wrench, loosen and remove the nuts. Inspect for any signs of damage. Remove conical washer and inspect for damage. Remove the piston retainers, piston cup assemblies, piston spacer, and inlet valve. Inspect the inlet valves for wear, pitting, grooves, or any other damage. The inlet valve can be used either side, so make sure that the side that fits next to the piston cup assembly is smooth. Inspect the piston spacer for excessive wear or damage. Inspect piston cup for wear, cracking, tearing, or separation from the piston. Inspect the piston for any signs of wear or pitting. Excessive cup wear will allow the piston to rub against the inner walls of the cylinders that could potentially damage the inside walls. Inspect the piston retainers for wear or damage. Ensure the surface that fits next to the piston cup assembly is smooth and flat. To remove the manifold, first remove the washers on the crankcase studs. Using a rubber hammer, tap the backside of the inlet manifold and slide over the piston rods. Remove the inlet manifold to expose the low pressure seals. Place the inlet manifold on clearance block with the crankcase side down. Punch the low pressure seals out with a socket tool sized to the diameter of the seal. Inspect the cylinder sealing surfaces on the inlet manifold. Invert the inlet manifold with crankcase side up and inspect the low pressure sealing surfaces. Inspect the inside diameter of low pressure seals for wear, damage, and note the position of the energizer spring. Install the low pressure seals with energizer spring facing downward into the inlet manifold. Using the socket tool, press the seals into place. Set the inlet manifold off to the side. To remove the sleeves, first remove the seal retainers. Grasp the sleeve with a pulling and twisting motion to remove sleeve from the piston rod. Note. Using a pliers may damage the outside surface areas of the sleeves. Inspect the sleeves for any scoring, excessive wear, or damage. These surfaces must be smooth to ensure proper seal life. Remove the O-rings and backup rings and inspect for any signs of damage. Using a pick, Remove the second o-ring located in the groove of the piston rod and inspect for cuts, nicks, or damage. Last, remove the barrier slingers and inspect for any signs of damage. To reassemble, Begin by installing the barrier slingers with the curved dish side facing away from the crankcase. Install the first o-ring into the single groove side of the piston rod. Install backup ring over the piston rod in position against the shoulder. Note: The backup ring does not go into the groove of the piston rod. Install the second o-ring against the backup ring. Exercise caution when sliding on o-rings over the threaded ends of the piston rods as it could cause damage. 
Prior to installing the sleeves, lubricate the O-rings and backup rings. Install the sleeves with the machine counterbore over the piston rod by carefully rotating and pushing the sleeve into place. If installed correctly, you should be able to rotate the sleeves freely. Next, install the seal retainers with the slot openings facing up and down and openings positioned closer to the inlet manifold. Position crankcase on end so the piston rods are facing upward. Carefully slide the inlet manifold over the piston rods and crankcase studs. Exercise caution not to damage the low pressure seals in the inlet manifold during this process. Install the four shim washers over the four crankcase studs. Return the pump to the normal position. Assemble the piston cup assembly by using the piston cup inserter supplied in the kit. Position the piston on a flat surface. Install the white cup inserter onto the piston. Next, lubricate the entire cup inserter. Place the cup over the cup inserter with small diameter end down and press into place. To complete the assembly process, squeeze the cup as you use a small tip of the screwdriver to tuck the edge of the cup under the edge of the piston. Install the inlet valves over the piston rods and ensure that the flat and smooth surface faces the piston and cup assembly. Install the piston spacers over the piston rods. Install the piston cup assemblies with the piston surface facing the inlet valve and the cup flared end facing away from the inlet manifold. Slide the piston retainers with the flat side over the piston rods facing the piston cup. Install conical washers over piston rods with the curved side facing out. and thread on the hex nuts. Using a 10 mm wrench, tighten and torque to specification. Ensure the small hole in the piston rod aligns with the small hole in the hex nut in order to put the cotter pin in. Insert the cotter pins with the longer end facing outward, as this will help in grabbing the cotter pin. Use a needle nose pliers and turn the cotter pin ends under. Hand thread on the four cylinder bolts. Use a 13 mm wrench to tighten the cylinder bolts to specification. Next, lubricate the piston cup assemblies. Also lubricate the O-rings and backup ring on both ends of the cylinder. Install each cylinder so the single O-ring end goes into the inlet manifold. Slide the discharge manifold over the cylinder bolts and press into the cylinder.
Install the four lock washers and hand thread the four hex nuts into place. Use a 17 mm wrench to tighten and torque to the specification. Last, ensure that there is no movement on the cylinder. To do this, use a crescent wrench to turn the crankshaft and look for any movement on the cylinder. If there is movement, shimming may be required. If shimming is required, please reference Tech Bulletin 17.